German job market is uh, hard, but not from the fact that there are no jobs here. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you still don't know, Martin over here make videos about my life in Germany, photography, tech stuff, and whatever else pops into my mind. Uh, today, actually I haven't done this in a while, I haven't made a video regarding Germany. So today I will be talking about the German uh, job market and uh, what I've seen in the past uh, two plus years here in Germany and uh, what are my observations. Since when you decide to move to another country and live there, work there, one of the most important things after all is uh, seeing how the job market is and uh, what are its uh, pluses, minuses, potential obstacles and stuff like that. So I really hope this video is helpful for, uh, for you. Uh, not sure how long uh, this is going to take uh, since the topic is quite big and um, just a heads up, this might turn into a two-part video <laughs> or a three-part video. I, I, I can actually talk uh, a really long time on this topic. But I'll try to keep it short and provide you the most uh, crucial information that you need in order to assess the current situation here in Germany. The German job market is uh, hard, but not from the fact that there are no jobs here. Uh, so I have some data put out. Uh, this is from October 2018. The unemployment rate in Germany is between 3 and 4% uh, for 2018. And in October 2018, there were 800,000 open positions in Germany. Uh, so you can see there are plenty of jobs. So where does the problem come from in general uh, with the job market here in Germany? Uh, first of all, I would say the biggest problem, and this is maybe uh, sort of an, uh, you can treat it as an obstacle for uh, for you, but also this is uh, a key point for any Germans watching there that they might work on, because they will benefit from this in the end. Uh, one of the things is the application process. The application process is totally crazy here in Germany. Basically, every single company has their own website where uh, you have an application form. Okay, until now it's okay, but here comes the tough part. They have these forms where you have to fill in uh, your experiences and stuff like that, which uh, most of the websites are not configured to... are not configured such that uh, foreign experiences and uh, uh, foreign... Uh, study uh, history and stuff like that uh, is applicable. It's hard to uh, put your uh, data in and um, for example you can spend three, four, five, six hours depending on the website uh, entering your data and also depending on how big is your CV. For example uh, mine, the short version is four pages so it's uh, not that small. Uh, also, they do not use the mainstream uh, uh, mainstream social media for uh, work-related topics like LinkedIn. Uh, and if they use it, they don't take advantage of uh, built-in features like Easy Apply. Uh, and uh, why did I say that Germans will benefit if they work on this? Is because obviously they have plenty of jobs and they need people to work. Uh, so when you Simplify the application process gets a lot easier. I personally have uh, closed around 80% of the websites I opened because the process was taking way too long. Uh, I understand this uh, for companies that are international and known like Continental or the automotive brands like Mercedes, BMW and the rest. Okay, they are understand you have uh, uh, a well-established base, people know you all over the world, they want to work for you, okay, that's okay. Uh, but uh, when you're just a local German company that uh, usually people don't know about you, this is not helping your business. And you might be missing on a really good candidate because of this. Second thing is the language barrier. Uh, 
so even I've had contact with a lot of companies here even if uh, if they say that English is like, for example, a company language and everything is in English, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's hard to communicate with people in English. Uh, they just, they just uh, don't feel comfortable. Germans don't feel comfortable speaking English and they refuse to do this in many situations. Uh, I do speak uh, currently German on a somewhat decent level that I can uh, work uh, with German, but uh, I always prefer English since it's uh, a language that I spent uh, years with. I studied in university in English and all of that, so that's my preferred choice. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, this is again a tip for the Germans. Uh, it's a foreign language for me as well. I'm speaking of, uh, speaking a foreign language as well. And uh, until most of you uh, say okay uh, we're not going to speak it we, uh, we don't feel comfortable you you won't you never feel comfortable speaking this language uh, it's like me with with german uh, until i actually started using it uh, on a daily basis i never felt comfortable uh, speaking no matter my level and uh, what i knew okay so we continue uh, down the road Second jobs here in Germany, uh, technically there are situations where you might have the time, you might want to monetize your um, hobby or something like that, uh, or just do some freelancing uh, separate from your job because here in Germany it's really rare for you to work uh, outside of your normal working hours and if you do they compensate you with paid leave so you have plenty of free time. Uh, and if you feel like it, you can work. Uh, but here comes the problem. Uh, every second job basically is a tax suicide. Uh, you have to, for example, if you do freelancing, basically you have to double uh, your charging fees compared to, to your uh, like full-time competitors in your field, thus making you not relevant for the market. Uh, so if you're a workaholic, uh, just forget the second job here in Germany. Um, since I mentioned freelancing, um, there are some uh, positives here for freelancing, like uh, usually they get paid uh, a, uh, a huge amount more, for example, for the same position as an, uh, a normal worker. Uh, you, you do have a lot of tax benefits uh, and uh, you can save up uh, from some insurances here and there, but you do have to pay them on your own fully. Uh, problem here about the uh, freelancing is basically you're not fixed. So if you're looking to settle yourself in one uh, city, town or just an area, freelancing most likely won't be for you. And um, what I've heard from colleagues who are freelancers, basically you, uh, you have a one year contract usually and after that you have to find another one which is most likely on the other side of Germany and then constantly move. I even know people that uh, live in, uh, in tra trailers because they cannot uh, find a fixed place where they would work. Uh, and this brings me on the, on the other topic. Because of all of this, uh, having security in terms of location, uh, in terms of contract, usually means you're getting paid less. And uh, the German uh, companies uh, are quite aware of this and uh, yeah, I would say that they definitely take advantage of this. There is... Uh, there is an alternative to uh, being a freelancer and directly working for a company, and that's external workers. Uh, it's sort of like really an alternative between both. It's in the middle. Uh, you, you can stay 18 months in a current company as an external worker. Then after that, you either get offered an internal contract or your company starts looking for you for another project. Uh, this is what I am actually currently doing and one of the benefits usually with this is that you, if you don't have a project, you still get paid. Like I am currently, I'm staying at home and I'm getting paid uh, until my company finds me a new project. Problem is uh, most companies are uh, quite small 
the small ones have a limit in which you cannot uh, in which you cannot have a project let's say three months or something like that and then after that they cut you off I work for a bigger company and they can afford uh, keeping me around but uh, I do face other uh, problems like uh, uh, that in the near future if I still don't have a project in my location I would have to uh, go from Monday to Friday to another city which is far away and I cannot travel daily uh, that means staying away uh, from my family and that is until they find actually something in my location uh, and to be honest I prefer this uh, than the other one that to be cut off uh, because uh, you still have uh, an income and you can still scout uh, the job market and look for something uh, permanent or whatever you're looking at in your location uh, due to the fact that most external companies do not work with every single company in the area and final thing here is the recruiting process uh, usually it's pretty hard uh, especially if you're looking from outside of germany uh, one thing I, I noticed is most German companies prefer to hire uh, other companies that, uh, for example, are uh, in Eastern Europe or UK. I, I, I definitely got a lot of contacts from UK to search the markets for um, potential candidates instead of actually fixing their application process. Uh, I would definitely say that if the application process was fixed, uh, uh, and this will actually cost less to fix your application process than to hire an external company. Uh, you, uh, the companies will get uh, first uh, less cost, second uh, most likely better candidates uh, because the approach uh, of the recruiting is uh, usually some random guys just trying to make a profit out of the uh, of the hiring of a person trying to sell him no matter whether he's good or not for the job uh, also they are uh, they are doing the uh, same thing towards the people that are being recruited they're trying to sell the company to them and say yeah this is a perfect company the project is exactly what you need blah 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 and then both sides end up disappointed uh, whew, I guess I can close it uh, here for today I really hope this video was helpful for you uh, leave your two cents below in the comments. I really want to hear what are your uh, observations on the German job market if you are already here in Germany or what are your biggest fears if you are planning to come to Germany uh, as well. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will answer each one of them, of course, if I can. So yeah, again, thanks for watching and hope to see you on my other videos. Oh yeah, and uh, if you still haven't done it, I know I said a lot in other videos, but if you still haven't done it, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, it will make me feel really happy and uh, will help me continue making these videos for you. Bye.